plays here. The guys that are the toughest. No. No. Be thinking the next play. The next play. That's why it don't matter what your age is. Not where I come from. The toughest are the ones that play. That's the truth. I'm Jay Crowder. Today is the day before the Wisconsin game. A big day for us to put things together and get focused on the game. Today we're just gonna go uh, to my do my regular schedule. This is the week of test for me because uh, this morning I had a test. Have a good day. This walk is like a thinking period for me. And while I'm playing music and things like that, I think a little better. So this walk, this is what I do, I just think. Sometimes I think about basketball, but as of right now, this early in the morning, I try not to. I try to focus on academics and things like that. So that's what I'm about to do now, handle some academic business, uh, start my day. Sam number two coming up. This is it. The test this morning went well. Um, felt great afterwards. Felt great before. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did, I did pretty good on the test. Uh, I think I aced it. Jay was focused this week, and I can say that for the whole team. This week, I can say he was really tuned in. Tomorrow at 1.30, I have another test with the rivalry of Wisconsin. Take the ball out here. What's going to happen if it's a late clock out of bounds? They're going to go straight into the screen. Tomorrow, I can be a part of history. The rivalry with Wisconsin, it means a lot to the fans, to the community. Um, for bragging rights, and just to show which school is the best in the state. I figured the alumni follow it. One of those games that you just want to, you know, you want to play great um, because you know there's going to be something's going to be talked about all year long. A UW player in the NBA, and then you have a Marquette player in the NBA. Like, take um, Devin Harris, okay? Take Wes Matthews. And it guards the sky for Marquette, number two, Wesley Matthews. I'm sure whenever they play each other, you know, they go back to saying, okay, Marquette versus Madison, or, you know, it's back to the old days. You know, they joke around like that, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. We just played the Nets, me and Devin Harris <laughs> are already talking about it now. You know, we're talking about it. I'm pumping uh, Jimmy Butler and those guys up for it, you know. Vander's going to go through it for the first time. It's, it's, it's like no other, and I wish I could be there. You know, I'm going to be there in spirit and heart, and, uh, you know, I'm going to go with the Golden Eagles all day. Take Dwayne Wade. I'm a part of this program. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be one of them old guys that's going to be coming back to the games when I'm done playing basketball. And hopefully they give me a nice seat on the floor somewhere where I can watch Marquette a year from now. Um, but, you know, I'm really a part of it. Um, you know, I try to do things to support the program as much as possible, um, stay in tune with um, the coaches and the players um, as much as I can, and, um, you know, really wish them all the best. Wes tells me all the time, it always goes back to that. Like, once you're part of that program, you're always going to be part of it. You're always going to pay attention to everything that happens in the future whenever you're gone. It's just, it's constantly a part of you. Marquette is for those people who want to make their own path. Marquette's for those people who have confidence in themselves but and aren't afraid to see what they're about, what they can be. You know, that's what Marquette is about. Like Buzz said, he, he's going to play his five toughest people. We had some of the smallest lineups against some of the biggest players, but he didn't care. You know, and, and if you're tough, if you're fighting, if you're going to work together, you know, you, you're giving yourself a chance every day. And, and that's what Marquette is about. Eight years later, you know, from when I walked out of, um, out of Milwaukee, out of Marquette, to come back, it's always special. You know, I got an opportunity going to Al McGuire Center last night, and just special going to there with some of my teammates. And, um, you know, just seeing, the, you know, some of the things I was a part of building here and um, seeing the tradition I met Marquette. Uh, just makes it feel good. It makes you feel proud uh, to be from you know this university, from this town, um, you know, in a sense. So um, always special. Both schools, both universities have great support from their communities, and I mean that's that's what really makes it. The fans really make it. Wes Matthews was right throughout this whole week. When walking to class or walking throughout uh, campus, 
fans know and feel this moment coming. Um, I'm blessed and thankful to be a part of it. Uh, I'm going to be a part of it tomorrow night. That's the Marquette students, because today's the Marquette Wisconsin game. And they couldn't get on this premises till 8 o'clock. So they waited across the street. 9.30 at night. Last night. We got here around uh, uh, during the Bucks, the end of the Bucks game yesterday. It's crazy the fact that they're diehard fans like that. And this game means so much to them for them to stay overnight just to get in before everybody and you know, be all hyped and excited about a big game like this. You know, that that shows a lot. I come from a long line of Marquette, grad, or, uh, Marquette uh, family members. I've, both my parents, my older brother, uh, about 20 relatives. I don't know, for me, both my parents went here, so that kind of carries on through them. We got down here a little after six. Well, it's been really cold. Hopefully, it won't be too much longer of a wait. Just the fact that, you know, it's cold outside. I've been cold. <laughs> I've been cold all morning, yeah. But. That factor has nothing to do with it. They could be hungry, that factor, thirsty, that has nothing to do with it. What they want is they want to see the Marquette Madison game. Basketball, we, our chips are in basketball, That's and nope. in a state where we're always competing with, with uh, Wisconsin to, yeah, for, for recruits or just for just airtime and respect. It's just, it's just a matter of fact. That's like a big part of their year, just to go early to this game. So when we see all the players, we can yell and scream, you know, get them motivated, get them ready. And that's a lot of love. That's, that's really a lot of love. You know, we played Wisconsin more than we have any other team in Division One. This is the 117th meeting. But, but it's really important to a lot of people. And it's really important to a lot of people on a lot of different levels. Um, but it, with, within having said that, it's uh, December the 11th, it's our 10th game, and we've just got to make sure that we're better uh, today than we were on Tuesday when we played, and we've just got to continue to grow, and that's not necessarily what the fans want to hear, but relative to our season and relative to the, our growth in preparation for the Big East, that's, that's what it's got to be about. Uh, and th I don't think that that dulls or takes away from the importance of the game, uh, but it's it's dual purpose in regards to what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. I think I should have just stayed up there, and I'm not sure where the donuts are either. Buzz, he comes here for the big games. He comes out and brings us donuts, and he's, he's a really nice guy. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh, Buzz is driving up. Yeah! It is white Escalade. Buzz and other donuts and things like that. That's just him giving back because he, Buzz came from really nothing. He always say he come from nothing, so I come from nothing as well. So if I get a chance to give back like I do to the fans, I'm, I'm gonna do that. And that's what he's doing, he's just giving back to the fans and I love it. We love Buzz! We love Buzz! Can we grab one? I've seen Buzz handing out donuts to the kids and you know, that makes that makes their day just as much as actually watching the game because it's buzz, you know. We care about our fans much more than they know. Coach gave him donuts early just to show him appreciation. And I mean, without the fans, it really, there's no us. I mean, we play for our fans and we like to make them happy, so. I mean, not just coming from me, but I can say from my whole team that we really appreciate the support that they give us. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. It's, it's awesome just knowing that he's really appreciative of us and he really appreciates what we do coming out and supporting the team. It's, it's really nice to see. Yeah!
There he goes. Hopefully the team will come out too. That'd be nice. To see all those faces smiling and yelling and high fiving and it's that that gets like our energy going like instantly. Just to know that you know they're here for us and they want the best thing for us in this game. Walking through the fans was like uh, a movie. Seeing those fans out there I uh, really touched us and it really motivated us even more. I know that I'll never forget the morning that we played the Badgers of my senior year. Like it's there's no way that I can ever forget that. You'll never forget that moment. Yeah, that was crazy. I had fun though. This guy said, I want to make another round. I don't know about you. I don't know about anybody. I want to go again. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Programs. From the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, it is the 117th meeting between Wisconsin and Marquette. All you need to say is Marquette and Wisconsin. And now the starting lineup for Marquette. And a six freshman from Madison, Wisconsin. When I was introduced, um, I was really excited and ready to play, but I had to calm my nerves down and just take my time and just acknowledge that it was just another game. Didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. When they called his name in the starting lineup, I don't think I've ever seen anybody with as much energy whenever they say his name in the starting lineup. Like, he was screaming, yelling, hitting his chest, let's go, this, that. He was being the most energetic young guy I've ever seen. You know. Uh, for an 18-year-old to come out and be that ready to go, be that riled up to, you know, fight for Marquette, that Van, he's, uh, he's going gonna, he's gonna to be really good. He's going to be really, really good. If the team responds as the students have, Marquette will win a massive number. I've never seen so many students. I didn't and know there was that many students at Marquette. <laughs> They're all here. The opening tap lure against O'Toole. Bonja! Bonja Vander! Vander! Yeah! 35! Vander! If we lose to Wisconsin, it's going to be the talk of the state, and many people are going to have their opinions about my decision about coming here. I didn't buy into the hype with all the Wisconsin. I decommitted. I did this and that. I just seen it as another game. Stolen away by Vander Blue. It's showtime, folks. Vander Blue with the two hand stop. You're my boy, Blue. Van, he's from Madison. He was originally going to Madison, and he decommitted and came to Marquette. We want Van to play his game, Van to be who he is. Now is now, and everything in the past is gone. That's over with. Kicks out, Taylor, open three, in and out. Rebound all Wisconsin, Taylor. He'll try a long three, no good. Rebound inside, layup, follow again. Wide open is Evans, 14-footer, he missed it. Rebound, follow is good, nobody on Nankaville. When we see them get an offensive rebound, that kill our, not spirit, but our momentum. Off to Wilson, pull up 12-footer is no good. Rebound, Marquette had it, lost it, and it's Wisconsin again. But after playing 25, 30 seconds of defense, then putting up a shot and getting it right back, for us to play 25 to 30 more seconds of defense, yet yeah, it's getting us tired, yet yeah, it's getting us mentally frustrated. Like, we got to get the ball. So now we're so worried about getting the ball on a defensive rebound that we're not even guarding the ball. Rebound inside, they get it again. We've got to become a lot tougher, and we, we talk about that. Uh, we work on that, but we're not as tough as you have to be in order to win at a high level. And uh, toughness is a variety of things, but you can't, you can't give up as many offensive rebounds as we did today. Um, 21 points of their 69 uh, were, were on offensive putbacks. I thought in the first half we were pretty good. They had three offensive rebounds. In the second half, they had 12. Uh, 
I have a feel for um, the collection of guys that we have. We've got to somehow generate some consistency within those guys that we have. And I think from that consistency, uh, above all else, we have to create more of a toughness level. I don't think our guys are soft, just like I told them after the game. I don't think that you're soft, but we're going to play in multiple games just like this, home and away and neutral site the rest of the season. And you can't get beat because you didn't finish plays. And finishing plays uh, is on defense is obviously finishing with the rebound. The students and the crowd want something to cheer about. Marquette down nine. Midcourt, it's Butler. Butler in from the right to the basket. He'll lay it up and in. Count it and a foul. showed me that my team, my teammates would never give up. We could have easily laid down and just gave the game away, but we showed everybody that we're going to fight to the end. Vander Blue looking to inbound, has Butler. He'll try a three in the corner. Good! Marquette within two! The end of the game was, was intense. Turn it up! Turn it up! The end of the game, we were ready for. There's seven seconds left. It's a three-point game right there. The end of the game. Here comes Jay. There's Jimmy right there. Everybody's with me, right? We got it down to a one possession game. There's seven seconds left, so we have plenty of time. So here we come. Hand off, ball screen, fade screen. They're gonna be switching it, slipping. You guys understand this? Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Marquette down three, 7.8 seconds left. He's shooting to the students and he missed it. Marquette down three, they've got it to bring it up with six. In the front court, down three. Bikes has it, and Bikes lost the ball out of bounds. Not putting it on Bikes at all. Things happen. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's mad at Bikes for that. The fans took it hard. I know I took it hard. My team took it hard. I wish the outcome would have came out different, but our team is just going to have to bounce back and get ready for our next opponent, and we couldn't dwell about this game. The buzzer. And the final, Wisconsin 69, Marquette 64. Man, show for you on your way home. Um, when I was sitting in my locker, um, I was pretty upset knowing that I just lost a game, not to be in Wisconsin or anybody else. Just the fact that we lost the game and I knew that we could have won. So I was pretty upset. Sitting in my locker, all I could think about was that's the last time that I had played Wisconsin. I really wanted to go out on a win. I really wanted to have a winning record against Wisconsin. But more than just for me, I feel like I myself let the team down because I feel like I could have done a lot more. I let all the fans down. I let my teammates down. I feel like I let everybody down by, by not winning the game. I think that uh, I think the scouting report was really good. I think some of you really absorbed it. I think some of you absorbed it more than you have in the past, which is good that you're growing. Every possession, guys, no matter practice, no matter game, no matter who the opponent is, it, it's, it's, it's monumental. It's monumental. It's not life or death, but relative to our team's success, it's life or death. It's monumental. It's critical, it's critical, it's critical. I understand the value of it. I understand the importance of it. And as I told you today, before we went and handed donuts, I know that a lot of people think it's really important. But I also know that we're gonna play a minimum of 20 more games that are gonna be very similar to today. So this is not the end all be all. We've gotta make sure that what we learn from today, we can execute in the remaining 20 games. Family on three, one, two, three, four. Boom. I think that game will trigger something big for our team. That's how big of a loss it was to us. Good morning. This morning we're just we're watching film at eight. Gonna go back over the second half for sure uh, and just try to 
you know, talk through and, and look through some of the stuff that went wrong. You know, this play, they ran just roll and replace. Turn it. Today is a new day, but we're always trying to learn from our past experiences. Next play next day is how we're looking at it. Uh, we're moving on to the next game, but steady learning from the last game. What's up, fellas? Good morning. I'm sure it'll be critical to learn from this and move on. Everybody get your uh, get pen and paper out while we're watching the second half. Roll and replace was the first possession. Harder closeout, no ball pressure. Dead behind the post. It's not always about going out on the court executing. Sometimes you need to be a student of the game and actually watch yourself and that actually helps people a lot better and I feel that helps me a lot. It was about four hours. It was long, it was early, it was hungry, but you gotta break it down. Every possession counts and we didn't play the game perfect and we, we're just getting better. Are you posting there, Chris? You understand, Vander? Wing penetration by DJ equals foul. I got out of it that there's a lot of different things that everybody could do better, everybody. And the film session in general, just that really exposed to our eyes what it's like when we're not doing us. Shot went up, did we take up space? Take up space, Van? Ball watching. Reg, I'm not sure you know the ball's in the air. Jimmy's behind. Let's see what Chris does. Then there's times during the game where it's like, what, what are we doing? You know, like, it looks like we don't even want to play. We don't want to be out there, you know? We have to do what Coach Mark and the scout report is telling us to do or whatever it takes just to win us the game. Our teams have always been slow in November and December. We got beat by Dayton our first year because we don't run 42,000 set plays like most teams. So we're teaching you guys how to play, get to the drift, get to the field, get it to the second side, attack from the baseline, dunker spot, alley. When you get to January and February, Plays will not win you games. Players will win you games. What I take from this game is that there's a path that we want to be on. And that path has all of us on it with the same mindset and the same wanting to do the right things. We all know that if we're on that path to create for each other, to rebound, then we'll be fine. Walking out of the film room, you're still thinking about the game. You're still thinking about the things that we didn't achieve uh, we, to help us win the game. And you're thinking about um, how the next day at practice you can, you can better yourself, better your team, and get to the next, get to the next play.